Hello Spirits, for context, Spirits and Axe is a new name for any short reviews or small parts about shows or movies I want to talk about. With that out of the way, Big Man is a recent addition to the animated adult genre, however it tilts towards the bad side of the scale, like Family Guy on recent times, like Velma. The main protagonists are Rip, Saltine, Swibber and Agatha, and the villains are Zane and Quail. The other characters are a mixed bag of boring or token characters. The only thing is worth noting is Saltine as the voice of reason, Swooper is the pilot, and Agatha is their receptionist, and is a lesbian who had sex with Amelia Earhart, who was voiced by Jane Lynch, who also voiced a lesbian in another bad 2023 animated adult show. Funny enough. Zane is Rip's old partner, and Quail builds a museum to impress his dad, since his other achievements weren't good enough. It's played off for community effects, so I'm not sure what it's about. The only character worth talking about is Rip, and to sum it up, he is a depressed and trauma striking character. While that may sound good, it really is an adult animation. Unlike characters in animation who have stories establishing their feelings and mindset, Bojack, Blitz, Frank, Luz, Big Man in this show, again, makes jokes at a serious topic. Like another show I know. Are you unsympathetic to trauma? Rip has a dead wife and thought that the show tries to bring her back and puts his bella on ice. Only so that he can revive her later on. And fun fact, both the characters are voice actors for Amy and Jake. As for acting, Andy's alright doing his Nicolas Cage impression, but the script was not great. For some of the better voice actors are one-off characters like Gunmo or Perito, while we get something like Reboot Cleo. Now the show really just looks like it belongs in the same world as an inside job, which is an insult. While the animation in Inside Job is a lot better, it still has other factors that make it stand out, whether it's world, unique characters or humour. However, the characters in Digman all look like background or one-off characters. The world they establish is architects are cherished and full of nonsensical supernatural themes like puff people, yetis or the holy grail. However, its humour is definitely its worst part which is sad since it's created by two of the producers for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. A lot of the jokes follow the same meta script as something like Velma, where they'll reference something or something little to no one will actually know, or it's well known in pop culture. Uh, I don't know if Ronald McDonald is sterile. I mean, if Explain the joke or say what it is before it happens. He's a big scary guy, but when he talks, he has a funny voice like Mike Tyson. Nice to meet you. I was right! Like a show I know, or stretch a cap joke, or scene longer than it should. And I'm not saying a show can't add on to a long joke. I can think of Bob's Burgers doing this and making it funny, but Digman stretches one scene out for over 40 seconds with pointless dialogue. Oh, I think I should just go for it and get all rubber everything, right? You'd be selling yourself short not to, yeah. Do you know a rubber monger? Not locally. But back home? Yeah. If Rip gives you my email, will you send me your rubber monger's info? Of course, but just so you know, he's in Temecula until Thursday. It's his aunt and uncle's 40th anniversary. The anniversary was actually last year, but Don hurt his foot, so they couldn't celebrate. Don is the uncle. What is Don's wife's name? Kathleen. Kathleen, Kathleen and Don actually met a few blocks away from where the party's being held. Is that so? But Kathleen was with Gary Del Vecchio back then, so she and Don didn't start dating until a few months later. In fact, he wanted to come to the anniversary, but he's staying in Chicago because it's his granddaughter Jessica's seventh birthday party. Is pony themed. Which, yes, was also her friend Madison's birthday theme. Ah, well, please send Madison and her family my best. Will do. And there was only really two jokes I enjoyed. Hey, Saltine, where's Rip? Oh my god, he's dead! Bursting my butthole? You mean bursting your bubble? No, I don't mean bursting my bubble, god damn it! Well, what don't you understand here, you stubborn old mule? Hey, watch it. Finally, its story is not to be applauded either. It's really just a few artifacts that are eventually stolen, thrown away, or destroyed, which ultimately leads to the Holy Grail, which has the power to revive people. But by the end, Quail's dad and Rip's wife are instead revived by the Unholy Grail, which creates the Auntie and Uncle Christ, which is for season two to explore and has been confirmed to be happening. In the end, Digman is not a great show to watch or enjoy. It's on a similar level to his Velma, only every character is either boring or meh rather than annoying and insufferable. Spirit out.